Welcome back, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match. This time we're going to be watching a match between Google Frog and Klon on Red Comet. So let's just get that started then. Google Frog is going to be starting in the northeast corner of the map. Klon in the southwest going for a very quick light vehicle factory, while Google Frog goes for Metal Extractor right before Heavy Tank Factory. We have seen this matchup before, however, when we saw it last, it was in the one day tournament, and that was a much earlier patch before the switchover where Panthers were pretty much changed to be countered by Scorchers and also set up, or possibly counter Scorchers. You know, let me just double check the patch notes. I'm beginning to think I got that backwards. That it's actually that Panthers are meant to counter Scorchers and not the other way around. At any rate, Panthers were nerfed, regardless. No, does not say what in the release notes what is meant to counter. Or which way the counter relationship is meant to go. Regardless, Panthers are definitely made to be not quite so strong. Like I said, in clumps, they aren't so strong because when they die, they EMP everything around them. And that will, of course, disable the rest of their party. So, Klon going for a very quick Scorcher followed... Or Dart, rather, followed by Mason, then Scorcher. Not too worried about getting raided early on. While Google Frog going for an early Panther, then Welder. An interesting choice, to say the least, though, in this map, not terribly surprising. Especially if he must be expecting Klon to go for a quick raider and then try and deal with it with the Panther. Like a quick Kodachi or something like that. But it is, in fact, a quick dart, and the dart will be able to get rid of this raider. Well, it doesn't actually matter. It's not even trying to. The radar stopped before it's even started. That dart doesn't even do much before it actually starts to deal some damage. But the defender... Gets built, set up, and able to get rid of that dart. Or no, able to damage the dart, but not quite get rid of it. The dart's still alive with 18 health. And Scorch is coming in for Klon. While the Panther comes in from Google Frog to start dealing some damage. Looks like it is going to run right into that Scorcher. Google Frog and Klon are about to meet up, but Google Frog able to get rid of that Metal Extractor. No, not actually targeting it for the second shot. But still able to get rid of a Metal Extractor, and the second Metal Extractor about to go down right after. Three health left. That's going to still go down. Nothing defending it. Google Frog able to get rid of Klon's Metal Extractors and keep Klon somewhat honest. Well, Klon, on the other hand, he is now even with Google Frog. Google Frog actually was a little bit behind in economy, but with that rating, they've evened out. However, Klon still managed to build up a bit with that and does have... A nice little military advantage. Actually, no, military is pretty even as well. It's down to the Panther, though. That's the big thing. Depends on how well that Panther works out. And let's see how that goes. It looks like the Panther is... Okay, I guess it was Panther Counter Scorcher. I was probably exactly backwards when I said that during the game with Randy. Panther now counters Scorcher, not the other way around. And Sactoth confirms this in the chat that that's the way the counter relationship goes. So yeah, Scorchers don't counter Panthers, but Scorchers in large groups kill anything. So it really doesn't matter too much in the Randy game, because that was dozens of Scorchers and dozens of Slashers. Speaking of which, no Slashers yet for Klon. He is focused entirely on Darts and Scorchers. And the Scorchers are tempting fate going up against that Panther, but that Panther, especially as it's being repaired, that is rather... that's pretty ballsy, but not what is actually going to happen. Probably didn't quite realize the Panther was there getting repaired. More welders coming out, more panthers coming out. Google Frog entirely focused on a panther welder build at the moment. Possibly going to transition to the Reapers fairly soon, but he's not quite at 20 metal yet. I expect at 20 to 25 metal he's going to transition into Reapers and get a caretaker and have the build speed that can actually make Reapers work in a feasible amount of time in a 1v1. Because, of course, 0k, like all Total Annihilation based games, the, your resources matter in terms of build time. Like every building, every worker has a certain build rate, which how quickly it uses up resources. 0k is nice in that one build power means one metal and one energy per second used by that unit. Always. Not all TA-based games are TA based games are like this, but factories have 10 build power to begin with. Most workers have about 5. Some have, I think, welders have 7.5. If vehicle ones have 7.5, most have 5. Commanders have 10. Caretakers have 10. And if you have enough resources, if you have enough metal, especially, but both resources you need, you can add a lot of fire... You're going to add a lot of build power to a factory and just get units that much faster. For Heavy Tank, this is vital because they have very expensive units They take a while to build, and one of the Panthers does go down to a Scorcher. The second Panther about to go down, but not quite able to kill the Scorcher in time. And that battle was pretty much Google Frogs to begin with, why I wouldn't really focus too much on it, but... Yeah. Oh, and Sactoth points out that, yes, it is an 
a matchup where micromanagement matters. Google Frog was not microing that Panther as well as he could have been. They probably could have gone off to the right a bit while being attacked. Because Scorchers, as mentioned before, deal their maximum damage at the closest range. Which is why Scorchers dive. They dive in, they deal a bunch of damage, and then everything in front of them dies. That's how Scorchers work. Panthers, on the other hand, can deal their damage at any range. And, yeah, the vehicle, vehicle builders, or welders, and I'm pretty sure also masons. Double check, because there's a mason right here. Sorry, masons are at 5, welders are at 7.5. My mistake. So, yeah, most builders are at 5 for build power. And as you can see, welder is starting to push in, and there is that reaper. Google Frog has switched over to the reapers, at least partially. Now that he has 23 metal. Klon, on the other hand, is getting a caretaker to use up his excess metal, and he is, in fact, excessing on metal. He has... A full bar of metal coming in, and it is, it is being wasted. But once he gets that, once he gets the caretaker up, he can start pushing a ton of metal into this factory, and then from there get units easily twice, if not three times as fast, given his current economy. Now Google Frog, reclaiming a fair bit just to even things up. But even without that, I think he's got enough build power to set up this Reaper, no problem. However, at the same time, Klon trying to find an opportune position to use the Scorchers, diving into the turrets. Getting rid of one of the turrets at the cost of two Scorchers, thanks to the Panther support. The rest of the Scorchers moving out of the way, trying to avoid the Panthers. At this point, the Panthers are getting ahead. While Scorchers are... Well, they're regrouping, they're possibly getting repaired. And the factory has not switched over to Reaper, sorry, to Ravagers or Levelers at this point. Though this, I wouldn't be surprised if he switched over to Slashers instead. Although Scorchers are definitely powerful anti-heavy in large enough numbers, so he might just be going for a huge number of Scorchers once it gets built up. And a th second caretaker being built up, Klon is trying to push all of his metal into vehicles, while Google Frog, on the other hand, let's see if he's built anything else. No other factories have been built, just the heavy tank factory. That's all that's there. Scorchers still, tr still trying to find an optimal position, while Reapers setting themselves up to get rid of the Masons. I have to try a bit hard on that, take another couple shots to get rid of it. There it goes, the Mason is down. The Reaper is going to have no problem just dealing with everything to the south here. And it looks like the Scorchers are putting themselves in a position to deal with this. But at the same time, the Panthers are going to counter off those Scorchers. And the Reaper's just going to take care of everything. As we saw with the game with Randy, Scorchers can deal with Reapers, or with any heavy unit. Yes, it was Reapers, actually. They can deal with Reapers without issue. They can just dive the Reaper and kill it. However, if the Reaper has support, then there are issues. The Scorchers cannot live long enough to actually do the killing. Because Reapers take a lot to kill. Speaking of killing, there come the Panthers. Four Panthers coming in here, getting rid of the darts very quickly, and need to get rid of the Scorchers, but the Scorchers are pushing the Panthers around, getting too far in range. One of the Panthers explodes, stunning actually most of Klon's army in the process. And the rest of the Panthers are able to get rid of the Scorchers. Cost of one Panther to get rid of the entire army of Scorchers. Not a bad trade-off. Google Frog is definitely pulling ahead here. The economy has been neck and neck, though. Both players have been even for economy. Google Frog actually is behind in energy. He needs to start building more power plants because he's not he is stalling in energy. His metal is excessing. Not stalling very much, mind you, but his metal is still excessing. That's not the best thing to do. Being that metal requires map control, and map control is not trivial to hold. I want to make the most of it when you have it, but it looks like Google Frog not too focused on that, much more focused on tearing apart Klon's economy. Also a good thing to do. You do definitely want to make sure your opponent's economy is weaker than yours, even if you can't make your economy stronger than his or theirs. Sorry, I shouldn't gender that. It, Women are able to play this game as well. I really shouldn't gender that. I don't know of any that do, unfortunately. Be nice if... You know, diversity is always a good thing. But... I, like I said, I'm not aware of anyone. But yes, I shouldn't... I should not gender that pronoun. That was a mistake. I apologize. However, for the rest of the commentary, there's nothing to really apologize for since I'm simply telling about what I see. And what I see is that... Scorcher Dive! But the Scorcher Dive is too weak. The Scorcher Dive being countered by the Faradays and the Panthers. Not enough Scorchers to properly dive a Reaper. Probably a dozen or so would be necessary. And it looks like Ravagers are the tech switch. Google Frog is going to have to worry about that, though admittedly, Ravagers, their biggest strength is going to be their power. I'm not sure if there's really a better option. Honestly, Dominatrices and Bit Surprise aren't being built, because admittedly, it does require that you deal okay capture damage is based on the health of the unit in question being captured so i'm not entirely surprised dominatrices aren't being used but still that would be an interesting way to play it out 
Looks like, however, Scorchers are being built in decent numbers. Ravagers are being built as well. And in the north, Klon's commander is starting to take care of Google Frog's northern expansions. Not a whole lot of defense there, but in the south is where the real battle is happening. One of the Panthers getting surrounded, able to EMP out a lot of the Scorchers in the process, though. They'll be down for, well, actually, they stopped being out. But still, allowed for some openings there, and unfortunately, Google Frog did not manage to take any of them. And this Ravager going down, being successfully dove, or dived, I guess, would be the way. It's a passive form, i got to figure out what to do. Dive, I suppose. The Scorcher dive was successful. Panthers are, however, able to get rid of the Scorchers that are left, but that Ravager is a pretty big loss, especially being that it is inside Klon's territory. Klon can easily reclaim that. Actually, Klon is starting to reclaim stuff over to the north, taking territory for the reclaim. And Sackcloth pointing out Dominatrices are actually terrible against tanks, which, not terribly surprising. I feel kind of silly for having pointed that out, because like I said before, the health of tanks is so high that it's rather difficult for the Dominatrix to actually capture before it just gets blown up. And totally missed this air switch from Google Frog. Does have an airplane plant. Why did I miss that? Because Google Frog loves his air switches. And at the same time, an air switch is coming up from Klon. Halfway done. But Google Frog taking a lot of damage. Losing one of his welders to a Scorcher dive. And the, Rav the Reaper as well trying to break Klon's hold in the northeast. He's been expanding the north pretty heavily. But it's going down as well. The Panthers, however, might save it. No, they will not save the Reaper. That Reaper is going down. But the Panthers will be able to get rid of the Scorchers that have been taking care of it. However, more Panthers are going down. A couple EMP blasts as a result. But even with that, that's a lot of damage for Google Frog's forces. He is still ahead in terms of military. His offensive spending is definitely higher than Klon's is. He's got nearly 7,000 metal in terms of military compared to Klon's 5.5. But it's also a question of how much metal is being spent on direct counters. And these Scorchers are definitely dealing a lot of damage. They are getting rid of Reapers without too much issue, but the Panthers are able to take their revenge, get rid of a lot of stuff going in here. As you can see, the center of the map has been heavily contentious this entire game. Another Phoenix actually coming around, not trying to dive, well, trying to bomb out, looks like these Ravagers and Masons, but not able to do so. And getting taken out by a Vamp. Klon does have his air, airplane plant set up, and this Phoenix not able to get rid of anything. Another Phoenix getting targeted, and to the north, Klon has been harassing very effectively a Shadow over here, trying to get rid of the commander. Is it trying to get the commander? Yes, it is! Targeting the commander, and will be able to take it. No, won't be able to take it out. One more shot will take it out. Got to keep a close eye out for that one. Same time in the south, though, vamps are coming to the north to help get rid of that, and getting attacked by the Lotuses, but they moved far too quickly for it to be a big deal, and... I think Klon is actually going to repair quickly enough. The caretakers are repairing his commander quickly enough. It's not going to be a problem. More Reapers coming in from the Heavy Tank Factory. And not much else. Much like in the game with Lori and Randy, Reapers are the order of the day, and that's it. That Shadow did not manage to actually deal any meaningful amount of damage. Neither Shadow did. There were multiple Shadows, but the Vamps are... Well, mostly confidently in place. One of them did go down, or up or across as the case may be. Vamps has been pointed out, bef pointed out before, consider gravity optional. But no, that, that vamp has decided to respect gravity and fall to the ground. What a good vamp. It deserves a cookie. Except, you know, it's dead. Its corpse deserves a cookie. Enough Reapers over from Google Frog, and it looks like the fact that they aren't able to deal with, or they have such high reload time, is gonna go out the window. That problem is gonna be gone. And they're just going to one-shot everything they encounter. No Panthers, however, to deal with the Scorchers. Just Reaper after Reaper. That's all that Google Frog is building at the moment. And Klon getting up some Ravagers over to the south. Going to attack from the southeast into Google Frog's base. Taking out one of the Metal Extractors quickly. And at the same time, Reapers are running into the Scorchers, but not enough Scorchers to properly dive them. Now at the same time, Klon is coming in. And a Phoenix is going to heavily damage these Ravagers. Looks like he's going to actually take out some of them. And... The Reapers are able to get rid of each other, for one thing, but also Scorchers. Although the last Reaper was a friendly fire. As has been mentioned time and time again, friendly fire is not friendly. And a Banisher, how about that? Google Frog building something other than Reaper, that's good to see. Because Banishers are definitely powerful. They aren't quite as rioty as one might expect, but they're still a powerful unit with a fairly decent reload time. But, well, four second reload time, okay, the same as a Reaper. But they do have a homing weapon. 
And for heavy tanks, that's actually a little bit hard to come by. Beepers do not have a homing weapon. They have shields that fire fairly slowly through the air. But it's still some damage. And it looks like both players... Both players getting taking advantage of these reclaimed fields to the north. Actually, is Klon taking advantage of the reclaimed field to the south? He apparently is not. He is... He is taking advantage of Reclaim here, over in the center. But yeah, both players are really taking advantage of the No Man's Land for Reclaim. And that is very important. At this stage in the game, most of the melee strategies that can be taken and have been taken. It's all down to Reclaim for Economy. But Google Frog, quite a bit behind. He has just finished up a lot of his Reclaim. Getting a Clogibot Factory as well. Interesting choice. Let's see what he does with that. My guess is... Hmm. Given what Klon is building, possibly Jethro's... Nope, he is going for straight glaive. Let's see what he does with that. Scorchers do take care of... Well, okay, other raiders can actually take care of Scorchers okay if they kite them. It's really a matter of how they kite them. The Reapers, however, can't easily take care of them. Like I said, no homing weapon. The Banisher is... Where is that Banisher? It has gone off somewhere. Probably just making its way over here and actually should be in the fray right now. I do not see it. Really, I'm curious where that Banisher has gone off to. Because that Banisher will be very useful right about now, and it occurs to me that the silhouettes of heavy tanks are not quite as differentiable as the silhouettes of, say, cloaky bots. I'm very surprised I'm having a hard time finding this Banisher. Anyway, however, Re Reapers are just fine dealing with static units and buildings, which are basically by definition static, and they are definitely doing that. Getting rid of these defenders without much issue main threat, of course, once again, being each other. And Reaper trying to get rid of this commander. It looks like they will be successful in doing so. Some darts trying to finish it off, but nope, the commander has gone down. Klon loses his commander. Not a huge loss at this point. He has enough energy income. He has a fusion plant, I'm sure. Maybe just enough, no, just enough wind gens and solar plants. Not even fusion. There's, no, he has a fusion plant. What am I saying? There it is. There's the fusion plant. Google Frog... Probably also has a fusion plan at this point. And there is a Strider Hub, actually. No Striders have been built thus far, as from what I can tell. I certainly don't see any. But there is a Strider Hub. We'll see what happens with that, if anything happens with that. Klon has the economy to make that work, but he doesn't have a great deal of military. Right now, Google Frog definitely has a military advantage, especially with these nine Reapers. Nine Reapers coming in here. And enough Glaives just to whittle on way at the edges. That's what the Glaives are for, just... Harassing at the edges where the slashers or where the scorchers are not. The scorchers are able to get rid of them fairly quickly, but there are enough of them. They're able to get rid of that fusion reactor. That's going to go down, take out everything around it, including a lot of the scorchers. Ow, there's a Dante. What am I saying? There is a scorcher. Kalan trying to turn this around with a Dante, and he might have managed to do so. The Reaper's taking a lot of damage. No Goliaths in play yet, if at all. Not sure, but Stiletto being set up to get rid of the Dante to try to just stun it out, or rather disarm it out. That should help from there, but still, the Reaper is gonna, or the Reaper group, that needs to attack from the proper angle. It's gonna be very tricky. And a tick as well set up. Pulling this Dante in a defensive position, or into a defense line. That's what Google Frog is planning on doing, but from that point, I'm not sure. His tick is setting up just in case some attack comes in the south, which is not happening. No attack is coming from the south. Klon is not there. That is a bad read from Google Frog, unfortunately. But this stiletto. Probably more likely to be used on the Dante. The Dante harassing the north and actually a bit surprising. I mean, it's it happens to be that it's a bad read, but really that actually wouldn't have been a bad place to go in for that Dante. Though neither is the north. The north isn't especially well defended either, and that's exactly where Google Frog is going. Going to the north, trying to get rid of what he can, and then work from there. However, that gives Google Frog plenty of time to prepare, and he has decided just to go straight for Reapers. Continuing with his Reaper construction, not changing anything up from there. And it looks like shadows are being built up to get rid of the Reapers. Seeing as Klon basically owns the sky with thanks to the vamps, that's not surprising at all. But the Reapers still able to get rid of a lot. Able to get rid of these Metalike Strategists, no problem. And slowly crawling into the base. Once they do so, they will be able to get rid of the factories. But they are not committing too heavily. And that Dante now re-engaging with Google Frog's main army. Faraday doing what it can, but that Dante has a ton of health and health regen. EMP is hardly going to do anything to it. While, on the other hand, a great deal of damage is going to do something to it. But still, at this point, Klon, he's not building up any more 
striders yet. But he probably will be fairly soon if he realizes he has more of an economic advantage. He actually has an economic disadvantage in the moment, but it come down to it will come down to reclaim. If Klon can get some good reclaim, that will finish it up, but the South Reapers coming in, getting rid of some nice stunned Scorchers, at least stunning the Scorchers and be able to get rid of the rest of the Scorchers. But still, those Shadows are slowly but surely taking care of those Reapers. One of the Reapers gone down, mostly thanks to the Shadows. The other Reapers are taking a lot of damage. And that Scorcher Dive is working out, especially with the Shadow support. There's just no support for the Reapers, and at the same time, the North the Dante has been disarmed. 11 seconds of disarm time, but unfortunately, that Stiletto hit a lot of the Reapers as well. But that Dante still taking a lot of damage. 5 seconds left, disarm time. 3 seconds left, 2 seconds, there's not a whole lot of time left, but once that goes down, so it goes for the rest of the Reapers. And that Dante has gone down, heavily damaging much of the Reapers, but still, those Reapers able to successfully get rid of the Dante. That Stiletto worked out. And to the south, the Reaper Assault has, we saw... As we saw, it was destroyed, it was taken out. And Reapers to the north are on fire, but alive. They should put themselves out quickly enough not to worry about burning to death. As more Reapers come up, and sort of pillars as well for extra support, extra fire support coming in. And Klon, once again, getting his reclaim in. No further Dantes, no further Striders. Still, it is a... It's going to come down to... The fact that Google Frog, I mean, good economic advantage has been swinging back and forth in this game. Google Frog setting up a scythe. That, we'll have to keep an eye on that. That'll be interesting. But the main thing right now is that Google Frog does have his military now pretty much evened out. That Dante didn't really pay for itself so much as it simply evened out the playing field. So both players are about even for economy. Google Frog, however, doing some very nice harassment on undefended areas, slowing down Klon's economy. At this point, Klon's economy is going to be largely reclaim-based. He hasn't even gotten his reclaim... His has not reclaimed his commander, even. But his economy is heavily reclaim-based, so while getting rid of the metal extractors does help, it's not going to get rid of most of Klon's advantage. Right now, the advantage is largely... Actually, almost largely historical. Sorry, these are Copperheads, not Pillagers. What am I saying? Copperheads getting rid of the Shadows without too much issue, actually. Nice use of support. However, get the Shadows get rid of a Caretaker. Not a big deal. Gulfrog actually couldn't really use that right now. Although, it is still a bit of a problem. He doesn't want to lose the Caretakers if he can avoid it. And another Caretaker goes down. Okay, that's bad. He wants to rebuild those, I'm sure. Because he may not be able to afford them yet. But it, when it comes down to it, if he reclaims something, he's going to want to be able to push that metal in. Or when he reclaims stuff, he's going to want to push that metal into further production. Or faster production. And where is... Well, Klon right now, he is just continuing to push out Scorchers. He is just... This match really has kind of stalemated a little bit. Google Frog does have some ticks up. And these Scorchers are just grouping up. Looks like they're going for an attack from the north. Try to dive in on these Reapers and... Scythe not able to do a whole lot. The Scorchers able to take it out. Got spotted too quickly. Probably trying to destroy anything that Klon had in the back. But Klon doesn't really have a whole lot in the back. In fact, I think the only player with a fusion plant right now is probably Google Frog, but I actually don't see any fusion plants. In fact, I don't see any at all. Looks like... No, everything is solar for him. His entire economy apparently is based on solar plants. Does he have any he has? He has 30. Yes, that could very well support an economy of 87 energy. Along with the wind generators, I mean. The wind generators each are... Yep, yeah, that could do it. So no fusion plant for Google Frog and Klon. Losing his Raptors, or at least getting them stunned out to a tick. But, at the same time, there is a Scythe coming back here, not able to do a whole lot of damage, unfortunately, and feeding quite a bit of metal to Klon. Now, I think Google Frog's probably gonna, just going to try to go for one big assault. He has the Copperheads to get rid of the Air Units. He has the Reapers. He does have, once again, a military advantage, at least by cost. And half a dozen Reapers is nothing to shake a stick at. Wait. Is that the expression goes? No, it's more Reapers than you can shake a stick at. That's how it goes. I apologize, I'm rather tired. My ability to remember what idioms mean for some reason is going out the window. I don't know why. You'd think that this is my native language, I would know, but apparently I forget. However, Google Frog is not forgetting to attack, and he is actually also not forgetting to support the tick explosion here. However, retreating as... Actually, both players are retreating at the same time. That was probably a mistake from Google Frog's part. Or on Google Frog's part. Sheesh, you think I... Seriously. I grew up learning English. 
I don't know why this is being a problem for me. But, the Welder, however, is going to go down to the Scorchers. The rest of the Scorchers on the south side of the map, the Scorchers on the north side of the map never really went for that assault. They ended up just going south and getting torn apart by the Tick and then by the Glaze and Reapers. But the rest of them are just starting to take out these solar plants pretty effectively, too. The Reapers are being repaired, just trying to set themselves up for an attack. Trying to just spam out shells, get rid of these Scorchers. Looks like they are actually not doing a terrible job getting rid of that, but I think Panther Support would not be a bad idea. And a bunch of the Shadows are, well, one of them able to take out, well, one of the Reapers going down. A bunch of them able to take out one of the Reapers, that's it. A bunch of the Scorchers going down at the same time. And more Reapers are coming, more Reapers and Copperheads. Now, the Copperhead Support is actually not really present. Fair to the north, but that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is... Okay, I cannot find that copperhead. There were copperheads. Apparently, they got destroyed. Not surprising, the slashers probably took care of them. However, Glaives moving into the south and not really able to harass them that much. Levelers are there to the south to take care of the Glaives, and Reapers are getting torn apart by the shadows. Another Reaper going down. Two shadows. And... Klon coming in from the south at the same time for a counterattack. And right now, Google Frog still has an economic advantage, and the players are about even for economy. And Tix coming in, stunning out the Ravagers. Are the Reapers going to come in? They need to come in to follow this up. One of the Reapers is already in place to do a follow-up. Getting rid of the Levelers, and the Ravagers, there are seven seconds left. They will go down. At the same time, to the north, not a whole lot to report. Really, nothing going on in the north. Main story is to the south, and that is Google Frog trying to get rid of as much as he can of Klon's forces, while Klon at the same time Attacking with Shadows, and the Copperheads have arrived. All two of them. And apparently they were being destroyed by the Shadows, because they have just been rebuilt. One of them goes down again, but at the very least, they are distracting the Shadows, keeping them from the Reapers. And the Reapers trying to do what they can, trying to hit air as the Shadows dive. Not able to do so. The Shadows are just too fast for that. But still, those Copperheads doing a nice job. And more of them are probably forthcoming fairly soon. However, these Reapers are still kind of mired in this one section of the map. They aren't actually... They haven't really been moving forward. Those those shadows have been stopping them. And stopping them hard. And a lot of rebarm pads, this is how the shadows have been going as hard and as repeatedly as they have been. These rearm pads just keeping them in the game. However, the Reapers no longer afraid, just pushing forward, not caring anymore. Doing what damage they can, taking out what they can of Klon stuff. Admittedly, this risky move, it might give Klon the, all the economy he needs to just push forward, but Google Frog right now is reclaiming up. He doesn't have an economy advantage thanks to that reclaim. And able to stop some of the vamps as well. Klon aware of what's going on in the north, but not really able to stop it. And a bunch of shadows once again trying to attack. The Reapers, some of them will go down. One of them about to go down. But the rest of them are still dealing all the damage they need to deal. Getting rid of caretakers. Getting rid of power plants. Getting rid of rearm pads. That's the big thing they need to do. One of the rearm pads goes down, taking out one of the shadows with it. And those rearm pads go down. That's going to slow down the shadows to a crawl. And this fusion plant probably going to be the next target. Well, no, the laser turret should be the next target. Nope, rearm pad. Once again, the rearm pad goes down. And an the strider hub as well going down to another reaper coming in. And nothing really happening. No counterattack from Klon. I think this is game. I think Google Frog has just finished this. Not enough rearm pads for the bombers to work with. They have to just share that one pad on the air aircraft plant. That is it. Fusion plant about to go down. The Reaper is a bit too close, but that doesn't matter. Klon has thrown in the towel, and the Reaper actually didn't take a lot of damage from the Fusion plant to begin with. Google Frog wins the game. My goodness, that was an intense match with a lot of no man's land in it. I'm very much surprised how much that center got just locked out. Red Comet, I guess, is like that. There's not a whole lot of room to maneuver around. Really, you got to go through the center one way or the other. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. So thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everybody.